Alexander Humphreys Wolcott, January 19, 1887, January 23, 1943, was an American critic and commentator for The New Yorker magazine and a member of the Algonquin Round Table. He was the inspiration for Sheridan Whiteside, the main character in the play The Man Who Came to Dinner, 1939, by George S. Kaufman and Moss Hart and for the far less likable character Waldo Lidecker in the film Laura, 1944. Wolcott was convinced he was the inspiration for his friend Rex Stout's brilliant, eccentric detective Nero Wolf, an idea that Stout denied. Alexander Wolcott was born in an 85-room house, a vast ramshackle building in Colts Neck Township, New Jersey. Known as the North American Phalanx, it had once been a commune where many social experiments were carried on in the mid-19th century, some more successful than others. When the phalanx fell apart after a fire in 1854, it was taken over by the Buckland family, Wolcott's maternal grandparents. Wolcott spent large portions of his childhood there among his extended family. His father was a ne'er-do-well cockney who drifted through various jobs sometimes spending long periods away from his wife and children. Poverty was always close at hand. The Bucklands and Wilcots were avid readers, giving young Alec, his nickname, a lifelong love of literature, especially the works of Charles Dickens. He also resided with his family in Kansas City, Missouri, where he attended Central High School, where a teacher, Sophie Rosenberger, reportedly inspired him to literary effort and with whom he kept in touch all her life. With the help of a family friend, he made his way through college, graduating from Hamilton College, New York, in 1909. Despite a rather poor reputation, his nickname was Putrid, he founded a drama group there, edited the student literary magazine and was accepted by a fraternity. In his early twenties he contracted the mumps which apparently left him mostly, if not completely, impotent. He never married or had children, although he had some notable female friends, including Dorothy Parker and Nasim Khan, to whom he reportedly proposed the day after she had just wed her new husband, Jack Baragwanoff. Walcott once told Nkm that I'm thinking of writing the story of our life together. The title is already settled. Nkm, what is it? Wolcott, under separate cover. Wolcott joined the staff of the New York Times as a cub reporter in 1909. In 1914 he was named drama critic and held a post until 1922, with a break for service during World War I. In April 1917, the day after war was declared, Wolcott volunteered as a private in the medical corps. Posted overseas. Wolcott was a sergeant when the intelligence section of the American Expeditionary Forces selected him and a half dozen other newspaper men to create the Stars and Stripes, an official newspaper to bolster troop morale. As chief reporter for the Stars and Stripes, Wolcott was a member of the amazingly talented team that formed its editorial board. These included Harold Ross, founding genius of the New Yorker magazine, Cyrus Baldridge, multifaceted illustrator, author and writer, and the future columnist and radio personality, Franklin P. Adams. Going beyond simple propaganda, Wolcott and his colleagues reported the horrors of the Great War from the point of view of the common soldier. After the war he returned to the New York Times, then transferred to the New York Herald in 1922 and to the world in 1923. He remained there until 1928. One of New York's most prolific drama critics, he was banned for a time from reviewing certain Broadway theater shows due to his florid and often vitriolic prose. He sued the Schubert Theater Organization for violation of the New York Civil Rights Act, but lost in the state's highest court in 1916 on the grounds that only discrimination on the basis of race, creed or color was unlawful. From 1929 to 1934, 
he wrote a column called Shouts and Murmurs for the New Yorker. His book, While Rome Burns, published by Grosset and Dunlap in 1934, was named 20 years later by critic Vincent Sterrett as one of the 52 best loved books of the 20th century. Wolcott's review of the Marx Brothers Broadway debut, I'll Say She Is, helped the group's career from mere success to superstardom and started a lifelong friendship with Harpo Marx. Harpo's two adopted sons, Alexander Marx and William, Bill, Wolcott Marx, were named after Wolcott and his brother, Billy Wolcott. Mm -hmm.